friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm, and I'm coming to you after the frost. So we had a frost a few weeks ago. If you are a follower of my channel, you know that. You've been watching me dig up the gladiolas and dig up the dahlias, and one of the things that I really wanted to do as part of the after the frost is get together with some other local flower farmers and just chat, just talk about our season, what worked, what didn't work, um, get to know each other because it's always good to have flower friends near you. And it's nothing formal, and it's just us hanging out at a picnic table. <laughs> So we met up at, it's called Handshake City, which is a location that Made in Utica owns. Made in Utica is a local organization that promotes all things local, and I wanna thank them so much for allowing us to use this space to shoot this video. I have to tell you guys, we were filming on an extremely windy day. I mean, our hair was blowing, the flowers on the table were moving, I had to grab the tripod a couple of times, so we are going to experience some wind noise in this video. I tried to fix it as much as possible. Since then, I have bought a wind block for my microphone because I live on a hill, it's always windy. So, you'll notice in the future, after, these, <laughs> after the Flower Farmer series, um, well, there'll be much less wind noise in my videos because I've invested in the wind block for my microphone. So I didn't think I needed to do that because it was pretty okay, but this one, um, this one experience proved to me that yes, I did need to get a major wind block because it was just, it was really bad. Plus, I actually did shoot an intro there, but between the wind and there, were, there was a man flying a kite behind us and got really loud, so he was talking over me throughout the whole thing, I'll show you. And it was covered in, there was a man behind us, <laughs> like making noises. So I decided to reshoot the intro inside my house here. So um, anyway, I will start out this video by introducing you and letting them tell you their own story. So I met up with three other flower farmers. We're all in upstate New York. We're all going into our third year, I think. So we've all been growing things for much longer, but as a business, we're all going into our third year. So we're kind of experiencing the same thing and we're learning different things, but similar. So it was really, it was a great conversation. So in today's video, we talk about who we are, our biggest successes, our biggest failures, and what we would do differently if we could do one thing differently this year, what would that be? So if you're new to the channel, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am married with two kids. My husband's name is Brad Pitt. That's for real. His name is actually Brad Pitt. We are high school sweethearts. We've been together for, I'm not gonna give away my age, but okay, 21 years. We've been, <laughs> we've been together for 21 years. And in 2018, we bought back my childhood home, the house that my father built. We moved out of that when I was in high school. So I was out of that house for 20 something years and miracle upon miracle, the house came up for sale again and a dream of mine actually came true. And once we got into this house, the property itself is just so gorgeous. We just kept thinking like it's meant for something bigger. What can I do here? And I never want to leave my house ever. So I'm trying to think like, what can I do to stay home? And I've always been a gardener and a flower grower and it's something that's like embedded into me. I work in nature. I do nature hikes with kids. I love to be outside. I don't want to do anything else but be outside and stay home. <laughs> like those are my things that I want to do. So when I um, happened upon a magazine, well, you know, one of the catalogs that came in the mail, I think it was a Brex tulip catalog, and the front cover was just this field full of tulips. There were red tulips. And I just showed my husband the magazine and said, babe, this is what I want to do. And I didn't even know it was a thing. So I started researching it, and turns out it's kind of a local flower movement where people are growing local flowers and, and selling them locally, and it's kind of on the local food movement, like everything's coming together. People are realizing the importance of buying local and growing local. Okay, so that's enough about me. Let's meet the other flower farmers. Hi guys, my name is Tabitha Hool. I own Hool Flower Farm in Little Falls, New York. I have been farming, this will be uh, coming up my third year, so we've done two full seasons. And I have an off-farm job, and like most people, not really happy with what they do. I've been in it a really long time, and was just looking for something different to do. I've always loved flowers, and I actually came across on Facebook um, a local flower farmer's page, and I said, hey, like, that sounds really cool. What is that all about, flower farm? So I did a little research, found out that there was a course, a workshop, um, florette. Just went to my husband and said, hey, you know, I would love to get into this, explore a little bit more. Maybe it could be my full-time job. 
he said, go, go at it, um, took the course, and we have been farming for the last two years. Things are going great. Uh, we, our major markets are really our farm stand that we have on our property. And then we also um, sell to local florists. So we farm on, I would say, we own 17 acres and we farm about two acres. So this year we had 15 or 16 80 foot beds of annuals. And then we've also made some investments within our peonies. We have about 650 peonies. Um, I would say maybe 500 different shrubs like hydrangeas and nine bark. We have um, a small tunnel maybe 40 feet, not very big. Um, yeah, and so that's, that's our farm. <laughs> Hi, my name's Erin Cole, and I operate Little Ann's Flowers. Uh, the name of my business is um, named after my former dog, who was uh, in my life for a long time. When she passed away, I started growing flowers at the same time, so it just kinda, kinda fit. Um, I've been growing flowers for four years, but only two years have I actually been trying to um, sell them. Um, I'm located in Ames, which is the smallest village in the state of New York, um, in the town of Canajoharie, Montgomery County. Um, our main outlet for sales is a roadside stand, um, florist sales, and this year I did a few weddings for the first time. Um, we own about four acres, but only probably have 3,500 square feet of bed space. Um, I grow a wide variety of annuals, and this year I'm starting to add um, perennials into the mix too, so I can kind of extend my season and have uh, more of a variety. I do this by myself, and just like Tabitha, I work full time as well, so. Um, the size I'm at right now is probably where I'll have to stay just because there's only so many hours in a day. Um, um, how I got into this was um, when I was planning my wedding I realized that there's flower farmers out there and never even really gave that a thought. Um, and then at the same time I kind of came across Florette's Cut Flower Garden book and I was like, this is what I want to do. Um, so I started researching it. Um, I took uh, the online workshop and that's where I met Tabitha and um, just I've kind of taking it from there. Hi, I'm Kara Keeley. Um, I am co-owner of Spring Creek Lavender. We are located in Remsen, New York, also 4B. Um, Trenton Falls is more where we are, but I have a Remsen address. Um, we are primarily a lavender farm. We have about 2,200 lavender plants, um, adding more in in a couple weeks. We, my father was a farmer for about 20 years, so I grew up on a farm. Um, after I got married, also to my sweetheart, high school sweetheart, we have three kids. Um, we were living in town and uh, really kind of missing the country, so we decided that we wanted to buy a farm. And so we talked to my parents and we said, hey, why don't you guys come move up with us and let's do this farming thing again. My uh, dad had been out of the farming business for a couple years. Um, and he really wanted to get back into it as well. Um, so we found our farm just basically by driving around the back roads in Remsen <laughs> like every weekend <laughs> and found the perfect spot. Um, and so we are thir uh, three multi-generational family run farm. My three year old goes out there and hoops the lavender with us um, and they do everything they can. We got into flowers. Um, I have been doing farmers markets since I was nine. so had a lot of experience with selling and doing different things and I saw another flower farmer uh, that was selling a bouquet of lisianthus and I was like what are these these look like roses but are way prettier <laughs> so I grabbed them started googling them found Florette as well and she kind of introduced me to the world of flower farmers found some other places like love and fresh flowers um, and just was like this is just beautiful uh, my cousin got married shortly after and she had ordered a bunch of flowers and instead of having florists do them she invited all the family to come over and make the wedding bouquets so we just got you know in the garage and just were putting together the bouquets and i was like this is awesome <laughs> like i really like this um so i've always been a fan of flowers and my family had been farmers forever so decided to jump into the flower farming aspect as well as the lavender yeah i just had a love for flowers and uh, it's a little different this time around um, 
back when my father was farming, he had, you know, built greenhouses and tractors and, you know, had all the big equipment that you could ever want and desire. And now we are on a farm and we're starting a new farm and starting all over. And all we have is a rototiller <laughs> and some shovels and hand tools. So it's a new learning experience for him. It's a new learning experience for me because I was little when I was on the farm uh, growing up. But it's been great to just get back to flowers and nature and yeah, it's a great new endeavor. <laughs> so somebody's gonna ask us, what did your father farm? Um, produce. Okay. He uh, did a lot of, uh, they used to do cows, then they raised turkeys and all that stuff. So if you're, fam well, if you're local and you're familiar with Civic East Farm Market, my dad um, helped to do that with my grandfather, so. Nice, yeah. I do know Civic East. Yeah. So where we are is right next to a train station. So we have to pause if we hear a train, like one's rolling through right now, so. We're gonna wait a minute and then we're gonna get into some questions. I'm skipping around on my list of questions because I don't like my first question anymore. Okay, so let's talk about what our biggest successes. First we'll go with, let's just do failure first. <laughs> let's do failure first because then we can get it out of the way and then we can end on a good note with the successes. Good idea. So I think you can go first. <laughs> biggest failures this year definitely was um, like killing my flowers by over fertilizing and not doing the right amount. Um, and then trying to recoup them and plant them in unprecedented like 90 degree weather which we don't ever get in this area so they got fried a little bit so then i just end up direct seeding things and then it happened but very good learning like you learn so much like from your failures yeah. so yes that was okay so things. over fertilizing over fertilizing uh, yeah you can over fertilize i didn't i knew that but i didn't really really realize that like it totally stunted their growth in their little soil blocks and I had them in the soil blocks too so over fertilizing killed them even quicker I think because they had they had less place for it yeah, to go, yeah. so yeah oh and I want to mention soil. Kara brought these gorgeous blooms for us <laughs> centerpiece today and some of these are yours the dahlias are hers yep. and then some are yours the eucalyptus, eucalyptus and, yep. and then so yeah cool. collaboration with flower friends it works <laughs> okay so Tabitha what about you definitely uh, my irrigation so, I mean, we, if you've been to the farm, we literally are right next to commercial wind turbines, right? So it's very windy. But this year I decided just because time and laziness, I put my irrigation on top of my fabric, mm -hmm. thinking it, that it would stay, but it didn't stay. <laughs> um, not only did it, it didn't stay, I came home one night and after a little mini windstorm and the, all the drip tape was like, Ugh. all like this. So, um, bad idea. And then not only that, but it didn't, um, you know, it didn't uh, absorb through the fabric well enough because of the heat that we had. I mean, it just the water evaporated before it even got to the to the flowers. So that was definitely one of my big mistakes this year. Next year, I'll take the time to make sure that I put it under the fabric. And then I would say the second failure was my successions for sunflowers. So, you know, some of the pro cuts that come in 60 days were actually blooming in 45 days because of the heat. And even though I spaced them, you know, I, I did a couple hundred each week. I should have went maybe a couple hundred every other week, yeah. um, every two weeks. So, you know, I had a mass amount of sunflowers, <laughs> um, which was great. But, um, you know, you can only offload so much. And then I had nothing at the end of the season. So, Same. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Erin. My failure, and this is my failure every year, I say I'm going to get better at it, and I never do, is uh, just succession planning and planting in general. Um, not just for sunflowers, but for some of the other varieties that, um, you know, like Dara, maybe some zinnias, um, would really like to have some fresher stuff at the end of the season, and I always just get a little burnout, <laughs> and I'm like, I can't plant anything else and then I decided to do it and then I was too late so I had some stuff that was looking really good and then we got really early frost so it never bloomed. Okay so I had all of those failures. <laughs> all right. So I well I didn't over fertilize but I think I started some things too early. Yeah. So they were in their 
blocks too long, yeah. um, which then stunted them once they got into the ground. Yeah. And then also we had those two 90 degree days, burned all of yeah. my transplants yeah. in yeah. late May. What? I know. Yeah. <laughs> like, so <laughs> there was snow like a week before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was digging my tulips out from underneath eight inches yeah. of snow. Yeah. So, and then uh, irrigation, my problem was not having any. So I had, we had five weeks without rain. I would be driving and it would be raining until half mile before my house. Yes. And then half mile after my house, it would be raining. And yeah, I didn't get anything for same five here. weeks. Same here. Five weeks. Yeah. And we're only seven miles apart. Yeah. So we're having the same weather. <laughs> so I didn't have a water system set up for my dahlias. And my dahlias are a ways. Like I can't bring my hose. I'd need like seven hoses to get to my dahlias <laughs> from my water source. So I fixed that with the, I, I, I bought those water tanks. We're doing rain gutter collection. So at least I have that. Um, and then what else? Oh, my wildflower field was the same problem. There was no water. It didn't germinate. I mean, it did, but it wasn't the wow that it was yeah, last yeah. year. Because weather, the weather last year was great. Try not to block anybody. <laughs> okay, so we talked about our failures. Um, now we're gonna talk about our greatest successes. Take it away. Um, so for us this year was our you pick. Like we were not expecting to have the amount of people that came. We didn't know with COVID how it would be, um, but it was like fantastic and people came back and they didn't just come back one time, they came back like multiple weekends. Like some people were there every single weekend. Um, and that was mainly just for the, the lavender um, that we did the you pick this year. So we have 12 different varieties that we grow. We were not prepared <laughs> for the first time. Like the first weekend, we were just not, we were trying to do too much and like, there was just so many people and I mean it worked out really well because people like staggered well and they were the field is large they can go out and spread out and so nobody was really close and everybody was great um, with masks and all that other jazz that so where did you ask people where they were coming from um, get, we had cage? people from Albany and Syracuse yeah that's awesome and um, so for, for you guys that don't know, that's about an hour to two hours away from where the farm is. Yes. So she had people coming from, from two hours from, away. From everywhere. And they came back like, you know, they came with their friends and then they came back again. With more friends. With more friends. <laughs> and we did a date night because um, we have a food truck also. Um, so we did like a food truck night and then like you pick and stuff and had tables all over the farm and like, down by the cool. pond where people could just come and spread out. Um, and that was, we had like a bridal party come that was supposed to go to Florida and they, they couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. So they're like, let's go here. And like, it was just really cool and people seemed to really like it. We have donkeys and goats and everything like that. So it was just, um, it was kind of overwhelming. Yeah. And I was not going to get hurt in a, in a, great in a, way, in a right? good way. Yeah. So I'm really excited for next year. Um, cause we make products too with our with the flowers and things like that. And that was way more than I expected <laughs> as well too. So I was up every night, like. Oh yeah. more because we'd sell out and my goal was to sell 12 of everything <laughs> <laughs> and my husband's like really i'm like yeah i think it'll be great like 12 of everything that'd be fantastic well yeah, it was way more than that it was awesome it was you Christmas. couldn't keep up we couldn't keep yeah. up so i'm really excited to like use the flowers more and like put them into products and herbal things oh yeah but, yeah there's just so much you can do so so what do you think tim so for me definitely it would be our um self-service flower stand like, I mean, we had our stand last year, but this year, our second year, was just the, the business, the support was just incremental. And I really do think that it's because, I mean, first of all, no offense, guys, but I live in a really, really great community, Little Falls. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best. I mean, the people are super supportive. Um, but having that self-service stand, it's great for me because, I mean, I'm working during the day. My kids are working, you know, my husband's working during the day. I don't have to be there. Yeah. But it allowed people that were, you know, home, quarantine, itching to get out to just take a nice drive and, it's pretty you know, get some, get some fresh flowers. And I really, really didn't expect. I mean, <laughs> it was, we, it was crazy from the moment that we put out our, just some, bulbs like tulips and daffodils we put them out early spring it was non-stop through the end of the season um you know the bulbs and then the ranunculus and then all the annuals and you know everything thereafter it was just crazy and i think just allowing people to be able to come to the stand not be worried about um you know mass gatherings or having to go into a store just pulling up in our driveway because our stand is literally on our property at the end of our driveway just driving in 
being able to get out of their car, you know. Um. There's a train! <laughs> Uh, I would say my greatest success is probably the weddings this year. Um, not because they were profitable, but just because I was able to do them. Um, I didn't advertise at all, and um, I was able to do five weddings this year, and the brides all seemed pretty happy, and I was happy with the way they came out, even though I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> the <Yeah>. whole time. <laughs> they were beautiful. Check her page Did out. Did you have it on your Facebook yeah, page? Yeah. Okay, I'll just um, So, I'm, I'm just happy with it. The way they came out. And, um, see did what you happens. do bouquets? Okay. Did that you do my Yeah. What did um, you do? So, luckily, like all the weddings were very, kind of, like the couples were very relaxed and they were just like, you know, you do you. This is kind of what we want, but we trust you. Um, so, I mostly did bouquets and then some centerpieces, but a lot of them did like um, bulk flowers so they yeah. could do their own. And then I did a few. Arbor installations as well. So I think for next year, that's right. Yeah, it was scary. <laughs> I, love, I love doing the arbor. Uh, the biggest thing actually that helped me was over the winter. Um, I took a design class um, with Black Sheep Floral. She's up in um, Plattsburgh, um, but I just followed her on Instagram and I really loved her stuff. And um, she was willing to do a class with me, and that really kind of got me over the hump because. You know, I just yeah. wasn't sure of the mechanics behind all that stuff. So yeah, yeah, that's the thing—the mechanics of like the arbors and stuff. I've yeah. never touched floral tape in my life. Yeah, so it's, it's like all that. What did stuff. you yeah. use for the arbor? Did you do a cage? I did or? the chicken wire. Chicken wire. Stuffed it with um, like dried dried or okay. whatever you yes. want. So trying to do like the foam free. Yes. Stuff. Um, that's where I think it becomes more tricky. Yeah, especially the first wedding was like 85 <laughs> degrees and sunny. Yeah. Oh god. And, you know. Yeah. <laughs> sweating it out like hope yeah. this goes okay but you know everyone is happy I just think like local flowers just look so much better than anything yeah. else yeah. you're gonna get so it's gonna look yeah. beautiful no matter what yeah um, so I think for next year though I would just do like a la carte weddings where they come and pick them up for me just because working yeah. full-time and yes. doing that it's, oh yeah it's a lot so we'll see mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't really know where it's gonna Fun. I think probably like I'm happy with my CSA but I think my bouquet bar was probably my biggest success of the year um, only because it was not in my plans at all yeah like I was not planning on it but what happened was I made mistakes with my CSA big mistakes so I needed to offload flowers because I had CSA members skipping weeks so I had all of these flowers and yeah you can post a bouquet for sale on Facebook or something but you know, that doesn't always sell. And if right. I have like eight of them, I might sell two of them. I needed yeah. to have a way to present the flowers in a way where people were gonna wanna come. Yeah. So the bucket or buckets of flowers on the porch and people just came and they made their own bouquets. And it was like an experience similar to like a UPIC experience yes. where you yeah. had people come in to do it because we, there was nothing else to do. Right. <laughs> so in a way that, you know, the fact that there was nothing else to do really benefited that. Yeah. Yeah. So you sell them by the stem, they pick yes. whatever they want, and yes. then you wrap it or whatever. Yep, they bring them to me at the end, I cut them off, nice. put the rubber band on, and I, I was trying to be all... I tried using yarn at first because I yeah. had yarn and I didn't want to use rubber bands, but um, it was just not practical. Yeah. To hold and try and to wrap try yarn. To do it. Yeah. My <laughs> first, my Mother's Day, I had a really great Mother's Day, and because I was overloaded with narcissists. and. Um, I did a super cheap delivery all over the place. I delivered to Oneida, which is an hour away from me for, for $35 for, with the flowers included. Right. So um, I did, I think, 15 deliveries on Mother's Day. And then I did yarn. But yeah. I didn't have the supplies. I didn't know what I was doing. But <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. But the, the bouquet bar you. definitely was, and people are like wanting to do it again. And I think yeah. it's going to turn into more events where I can have people come and you know bring a bottle of wine with their friends and do like a bouquet seminar. I would love to take some like floral design classes. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Extremely helpful. I yeah. really recommend it. We yeah. had a, our first workshop at the end of the season. That, oh yeah, like, the, sold out the watercolors? Yes. Yeah, it was yeah. gorgeous. And it was, I mean, when you ask like what do you envision for your business, that's what I like. Yes. I love, like I love looking at Aaron's work with weddings and yeah. It stresses me out. Like I, I, I get very like I want to 
do things perfect and I just I wouldn't be able to do that yeah. um, I would my vision is just like I love the self-service like the little mason jars that we yeah. do all the time with the stand very you know low pressure the workshops are like what I see yeah. us doing yeah more full-time mm -hmm. but yeah we sold out in like two days we collaborated with a local artist I was gonna say who did it for you yeah yeah awesome. uh, Marissa Perkins it was awesome. great uh, we did it outside. I mean, it was chilly towards the end of the night, so we would probably do it earlier in the season. Yeah. But, you know, just doing, have make your own bouquet, yeah. you know, with the, I mean, people love that. I yes, love that. I've do. taken my yeah. own workshops at other farmers to yeah. just, you know, pay a certain amount and pick whichever ones you want and make your own masterpiece. Yeah. I mean, that's a great night yes. to me with a glass of wine mm -hmm. and, you know, a couple snacks and your girlfriend. Yeah, yep, definitely. Um, that's what I see us doing more in the future. Just workshops really yeah. we had yeah. painting with a twist come out and do it mm -hmm. they did it in the lavender field and that was really fun yeah. and I took the last yeah oh, that's awesome. it, but it was great because it was just different. yeah you know that's my idea yeah. at the time yeah okay all right, we're going to do one more question for this video and then I'm going to pretend that we're not in the same place at the same time and we're going to get in video number two going. <laughs> but so the last question that I have is um, and we might have answered it a little bit, but um, what would we do differently if we could start this year over again? So take a moment and think. I'm going to move the camera. Yeah, well, that's what I would do differently next year because we did not mend the soil yeah. ever in the past two years because it, it just wasn't in our budget. And now that the farm has had some income, it's easier to, like, purchase things. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, it's really hard to say no to beautiful pictures of pretty flowers and do the <laughs> stuff that you're supposed to do. And I really wish um, I mend the soil would have done that. Yeah. So that's totally what... I would do all the stuff they tell you to do and you're like yeah yeah let's see if i can get away with it yeah, yeah. yeah. irrigation of some sort is necessary but amending the and then mending the soil yeah. is probably even more than that so we might do some more no-till stuff and i'm not sure what we're gonna do with that but i definitely want i need to amend, <laughs> amend yeah. the soil so soil testing and yes. soil. i did the soil testing and everything yeah. came back like you know pretty good mm -hmm. like average to above average but doesn't matter you still need, need to need something add for your more to it. Yeah. You, you need more like because I was like oh maybe I can get away with it this year or whatever I want to buy peonies and you know all these other perennials because I'd love to have a lot more perennials um, so I didn't do that and I'm, that was definitely like a mistake you could just it was better than last year but like you could definitely see like by the end the zinnias were just like they needed they needed it, it. Yeah. <laughs> like I was like oh so yeah. definitely okay so mending soil Number one. Yes. So I'll go. Um, so I think my um, what I would do differently was my succession planting. I think I planted things too closely mm -hmm. together, like not space wise, but time wise. And because we had such ridiculous 90 degree heat this year that we don't normally have, all the lilies that I planted over the course of five weeks all bloomed within 10 days. So I had, I had 750 lilies yeah. over the course of just a couple of weeks. And so maybe spreading out those plantings. Yeah. Same thing with my glads. I planted 300 glads once a week and they were blooming all at the same time. And they're, you know, they're, they bloom by color. So I didn't realize that either. <laughs> like I, I was having pink and purple glads the last of the season. Like I don't want them in September. I want, want them the, in, the, in the early yeah. July. So if you want a certain color at a certain time, buy the certain color <laughs> because I was doing, I did a mixed bag of glads. So um, I had no idea what was coming at what yeah. time. I would definitely pay more attention to my weeds. <laughs> <laughs> and I would I make sure those little buggers that are this big get ripped out before they become these giant, overwhelming, hard to pull, you know, monsters. Um, so, I mean, I know that's one thing my husband and I have he has told me, you need to, you know, you need to find somebody, you know, whether it be a high schooler or somebody that's willing to come and weed for you mm -hmm. uh, more than two hours a day. You know, like it's got to be a full-time job. If you're going to have, I mean, because we were at the point where literally it was overtaking our beds. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. People thought we were growing crabgrass. I mean, um, <laughs> yeah. it was just, yeah. and then once they get that tall, you, I mean, in a matter of weeks, it gets yeah. like that. Yep. Um, I thought like a couple hours a day was enough, but it's not. Like I need, to, I yeah. need to invest in somebody full time. Like we don't, ha we don't, there's, we don't really have anybody. I mean, my sister helps me occasionally. My my niece helps me occasionally, but we don't hire. We don't have like a farm hand that helps consistently. But next year for sure, I'll have to have a full time leader. 
um, because when you pull, I mean, you're just you're just wasting your time. The flowers are not pulling doing their the yeah, they're pulling them out. They're not growing to their potential, and it just looks like uh, crap. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> mine looked like a field of yes. frosted explosion glass right. grass just, because yeah. that's all I had. I told my husband yeah. I was just growing that too. Yeah, yeah it's for filler. It's, it's, yeah, it's for filler. filler. <laughs> and I did use it, but still. Not that much. <laughs> so did you use like Bio360 or any landscape fabric or anything so, yeah, like that? So yeah, everything is in landscape fabric, um, but that's it, you know? It's, but it's still, it does it. I mean, they get into the smallest cracks, they you know, do. where the yeah. staple holes are, if a staple yeah. comes out. I mean, it literally, any yes. any area, even under, they make their way under, you know, yes. they start under the fabric and they find that little source of light uh -huh. and, and they, they just come. take off. Yeah. And they're so long. They're like, so it's long. Like, <laughs> and binweed, oh my yeah. gosh. Like that is just taking Oh god, it's all, all over. All, all over. Yeah. 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 And my husband Strangling made the my mistake. So here's something for no-till gardening. So yeah. we till yep. and so you take one bindweed root mm -hmm. and you till. Yeah. And you make 75 and you make babies. More. Yeah. <laughs> and you didn't realize that <laughs> until no. Yep, I all realized that too. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Because oh we, we had a patch that was okay. Like, we were sort of managing it not too bad. And my dad's like, that's getting pretty um, intense. Do you want me to, like, rotate that for you? I was like, sure. Because it was in between the peonies. Mm -hmm. Well, like, two days later, it felt like two days later, it was like, yeah. I was like, what? You that just long. rotated it. Yeah. Then I found out that that makes it worse. <laughs> yep. Every Cutting single Japanese piece of beetles in half makes them worse. They come back. Don't oh, do yes. that either. It attracts what? more. They were terrible. Oh, I, I used to cut the Japanese and they would attract more. Yeah. So that's why you pop them into like soapy water or yeah. Yeah. feed them to a frog. That's what my kids were doing, collecting them and feeding it to <laughs> I their it pet to the frogs. Chickens. Yeah. Yeah. Darn. Bad. Well, that brings me to my uh, it does. <laughs> thing I do differently is we have a terrible Japanese beetle problem. Like, <laughs> terrible. Like they'll go out and there's thousands of them yeah. out there, I think. Um, so my plan this year was to especially for the zinnias, um, plant them underneath hoops and put like insect row cover over them and then I just got too busy and didn't do that. So next year I'm doing that because they completely just decimated my crop and I just I work full time so I can't be out there picking them off all day long. Um, but they're bad. They're What were they attracted to the most? The zinnias, for yeah. sure. Um, they'll just strip every single leaf off of them. So, what, so quickly before we end this um, video, do you guys, are you all try to do like organic stuff or does anybody spray? I'm trying not to spray. Yeah. I really don't spray a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, we don't the only spray. thing we I don't spray, spray would be the zinnias towards the end of the season just because of the mildew and blight. Yeah. Um, but it's really very minimal and I, I don't do it. Like I'll harvest them. Then I'll spray. So mm -hmm. there's a few days yeah. in between. Yeah, we um, we're not organic. I mean, we're not certified organic, yeah, right? But we practice. practice. Um, yeah. You know, we follow the organic practices, and we use a lot of neem oil. Which yeah. I mean, I don't know if it really works, but we do use that. Put it down, makes me feel better. We uh, release a lot of beneficial insects, like uh, ladybugs, every year. Um, other things. Have you so, tried the nematodes? I have. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I just. It takes find years it, yeah. for that to build up into work. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'd it rather <laughs> do it. You know, get it started. Yeah. Because the Ar Arbico keeps emailing me. Like. Yeah. Do it now. <laughs> okay. So that's gonna wrap up this video for now because I think we've been talking for two hours. <laughs> but um, we're gonna come back with a part two and we have a little bit more to talk about. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. So this was just the first part in this series and there will be a part two. Uh, hopefully I'll get it out to you guys in about a week, spread them out a little bit. Um, and then the next video we talk more about investments, what we, where we've invested our money, um, where we want to invest our money, um, the perennials, and we talk about um, the classes that we've taken. So two people took florets and then the rest of us took uh, Dave and Lisa's course with the Advanced Flower Farming School. Um, we talked about, oh, some other courses that they're taking or have taken that were beneficial to them. So just, we're jam packing a lot of conversation and that's all it is. We just sat down and had a conversation. It's just me and a camera. This is not a, a high budget production. So um, I'm just trying to 
just bring you guys some other voices in the flower farming world and I think it's really great. I'm so excited that you guys got to meet these girls. I had a great time. We were talking on social media afterwards, like we could have stayed there all day. And we did stay there for three and a half hours, but we could have stayed there all day just chatting about flowers and, and just our goals and our wishes. And, and that's actually how we end the video. The next one is that we, uh, we describe our five year plan, where we see ourselves in five years. So. Anyway, so part two will be coming at you pretty soon, so thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time.